Come stai? Quanti anni hai? Dove vai? Dov'è la banca? How do you ask questions in Italian? This one is a very important topic in the Italian grammar, which is a little bit different from English. So I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm Manu Venditti here with Italy Made Easy. We're getting towards the end of your initial journey with the Italian language and I hope that you continue all the way to fluency. There are two ways of asking questions in Italian. There are two ways of asking questions in Italian. The main one is just changing your intonation and your pitch. So you are saying, you're making a statement, you're using the same structure that you would use for a statement, but you change the way you say it and you make it sound like a question. The other option is when we're using question words and it, the Italian way of doing question words is similar to the way where works in English. You can ask many questions, you have why, you because all the other options, but keep in mind where because that is more similar to the way we do it in Italian, so it's best if you associate with that if you really need to. So, mangi un panino is a statement. Mangi is a verb conjugated in the second person. You are eating. Mangi un panino. You are eating a sandwich. If you were to ask, are you eating a sandwich? All you would do in Italian is change the intonation. Mangi un panino? Are you eating a sandwich? So, mangi un panino, statement. Mangi un panino, question. That's it. In, in writing, you just put a question mark. Lei parla italiano. That means she speaks Italian or you, ma'am, you, sir, speak Italian. Lei parla italiano, it's a statement. You're describing somebody, say, lei parla italiano. But if you were to ask me, does she speak Italian? Your sister, your cousin? Or if you want to say, do you, sir, speak Italian? Do you, ma'am, speak Italian? Then all you do is make it into a question. Lei parla italiano? Lei parla italiano? Does she speak Italian? Or do you, sir, do you, ma'am, speak Italian? Lei parla italiano? Loro prenotano una camera in hotel per cinque notti. That's a long statement. Loro prenotano, they book, they are booking, they will book una camera, a room, in hotel, at the hotel or in a hotel, like at a hotel, per cinque notti, for five nights, right? How does that become a question if you were asking me, are they booking a room for five nights? Just say it with a question intonation. Loro prenotano una camera in hotel per cinque notti? See, it doesn't have to be fast. As long as the, the whole intonation sounds like a question. Loro prenotano. You see how it's statement? Loro prenotano. If I'm planning to ask a question for such a long sentence, I still indicate that it's a question from the beginning, but it's not like I'm going to go, Aah! I'm not going to go up in pitch 25 times because it's a long sentence. So hear the difference with the question. Loro prenotano, it's just even that two, those two words already sound a little bit questiony, don't they? So that's how you do it. Now, when it comes to asking questions with question words, the structure of the sentence is different, just like it changes in English. Because of course, you can do this changing the tone in English as well. You're tired? Instead of, are you tired? You know, so we can do that in English as well, the changing of the pitch. But when it comes to question words, it's a little different. So let's look how it works. So in English, we have, where is the bank? So we have the question word, where, then we have the verb is, in this case, where is, and then the bank, the thing that you're looking for. Now, this is a template that I want to give you because if you are thinking, where does she study, then we're messing things up. It doesn't look like Italian. So take this as the example, where is, whatever. So you have the question word, the verb conjugated correctly, where is the bank? Because the subject is what? The subject is the bank in English. In Italian, this would be, dov'è la banca? Dov'è la banca? Dove is the word for where, which we shorten to dov, because the, the word for is, is è. So instead of saying dove è, we say dov'è. Much easier, right? Sounds better, like dov'è, where is it? Dov'è la banca? Where is the bank? So the order of the elements in the sentence is exactly the same as English in this case. That's how all Italian questions that use question words work. So you gotta keep that in mind. Where are we eating in Italian? You gotta think of this. Are we eating is we're eating, right? It's you need to conjugate the verb mangiare in the noi. Where do we eat? Where are we eating? Where will we eat? Where we will be eating? All of those are mangiamo in Italian. So now you have the question word where, which is dove, and now you would say, are we eating, which is mangiamo. So the final question is, 
Dove mangiamo? Where do we eat? Where are we eating? Where will we eat? Where shall we eat? All those options. So, dove mangiamo? Dove mangi? Where are you eating, my friend? Dove mangiano loro? Oh, you see what I did? Dove mangiano loro? Where are, where are they eating them? Because I need to put the subject after the verb because the template I gave you is where is the bank? The bank is the subject of the question. Where is the bank? Where the bank is? But you say, where is the bank? So that's what we're going to do in Italian. And I know you will struggle with this. And I'll, I'll tell you what, what I see usually in learners of Italian, what kind of mistakes come up. But let's look at the, the next one. Dove lavori? Where do you work? Because lavori means you work or you are working. So dove lavori? Where you work? Dove lavori? I, I told you that we want to use where is the bank as the template because whenever the verb is not to be, English changes and it starts introducing the do which messes things up if you're thinking too much in English, right? So where do you work? Now the verb is at the end of the sentence and not the subject. So let's stick in your mind with where is the bank? And that's how all Italian questions work, like I said. Dove studia? Dove studia? Where does she study? Where is she studying? Or where are you studying? So where she studies? Dove studia? If I want to say where does she study, but the she is not the word she, it's a person's name, Maria, then I would say, dove studia Maria? Where does Maria study? Where she studies? And then the subject, who? Maria. Dove studia Maria? And that's where it gets tricky with the subject pronouns and the nouns, like I said, because you don't know where to put them usually. Where does Mary work? In English, Mary comes before the verb. So, so does in Portuguese and many other languages. So Italian is doing it quite differently. And it will take you some time to get used to the idea that you have the question word, then you have the conjugated verb, and then the subject. It makes sense where, when you're thinking dove la banca, because that matches English, right? But dove lavora Mary, dove lavora Mary, you wouldn't think that. But that's how you should say it. So where are they eating? How would that be? Where are they eating? That's the problem, right? So if you remember the template, where is the bank, dove la banca, you have the answer. Dove lavora Mary? The question word dove, the conjugated verb lavora, conjugated in the third person because the, per the subject is Mary and then you put the subject. So dove lavora Mary? Dove mangiano loro? Where are they eating? Dove mangiano loro? So when it comes to questions in Italian, what happens to the subject? Well, there are two options. It's either omitted, dove lavori? Where you work? Dove mangiamo? Where we eat? So we don't say dove noi mangiamo, dove man we don't say it. Or if we want to specify the subject, we put it after the verb. That's the key. If you need to specify the subject, then you add that bit of information. So I said, dove mangiamo is the good question for where are we eating? But let's say we're in a context where we're two groups of people, or we're one group and we're splitting, and they said that they're going to eat there. So my question is, where are we? instead gonna eat. So I want to emphasize the where are we gonna eat. In that case, I bring in the subject, noi, and I put it at the end of my sentence. Dove mangiamo noi? As opposed to loro. So there's gonna be a contrast for you to need to add the subject or the subject must be a subject in the third person, like somebody's name or, you know, a place, then you're gonna have to say what it is, right? So the question word for what in Italian is Three options, cosa, che, and che cosa. They all mean the same thing. So you can use whichever one you like. I, I have a sense that in the South, we prefer che, in the North, they prefer cosa, and the kind of like the standard, kind of like a probably higher register might be che cosa. Now, there's a little disclaimer with che cosa, but let's see if I can cover it in this. You know, I'm trying to give you uh, a quick lesson. In our courses, we have a whole unit uh, discussing questions uh, like this, but che mangiate? That means what you guys eating? What do you eat? What are you eating? So we have the question word che, and then the conjugated verb mangiate, because I'm asking you guys eating, right? I can also say cosa mangiate? Cosa mangiate? Or I can say che cosa mangiate? Che cosa mangiate? They're all possible and they're all equal. When the what question is followed by a noun, though, like, you know, what philosopher are you studying? You know, in English, you might probably tend to say which <laughs> in many cases, but when we have 
a what question followed by a noun, only che can be used. So we cannot use cosa or che cosa. So here's an example. Che pizza mangi? What pizza will you eat? What pizza are you having? Which pizza, you know, like, so that's the which pizza. So che pizza is the only way of asking that question. I cannot say che cosa pizza and I cannot say cosa pizza. Che pizza mangi? Che jeans prova? Which jeans is she going to try on? Like, che jeans prova? Che jeans prova? Now, the question for when is quando. Remember the structure? Question word, conjugated verb, and then the subject if needed. Now, in this case, I'm assuming we're going to need subjects more often than with other questions. Quando arriva il treno per Firenze? Quando arriva? When does it arrive? What? The train to Florence. So when does the train to Florence arrive? That's in English, but in Italian, question word, quando? Conjugated verb arriva because it's about the train, so it arrives, like in English. When does it arrive? So it's conjugated for the third person. Quando arriva, and then you say what? Quando arriva il treno per Firenze? I know that the temptation for English speakers and for Portuguese speakers especially would be to say quando il treno per Firenze arriva. But that is incorrect and it's, they will still understand you, but it's... It sounds very awkward to ask it that way. Quando lavori? When do you work? Now, in this case, we don't need a pronoun because lavori means you work. So it's clear what I'm, who I'm talking about. So quando lavori? Now, how? The word for how is come. Come. So now, same structure. Come prepari la pizza? Come prepari la pizza? How do you prepare pizza? Come prepari? Subject being you, but we don't need to say. Come prepari la pizza? How do you prepare what? Pizza. Come lavorate tu e Stefano? Now, here I need the subject tu e Stefano because I want to be specific. How do you guys work? You guys being you and Stefano. I could have just said come lavorate if I'm already talking to you guys. But in a context where maybe I told you how I work, you know, how I do the job, and then say how about you guys, you want to emphasize the, the, the you guys, which would make you need to say the pronoun because otherwise you're not able to emphasize it. So it's all about context when you do need to throw a subject after the verb or not. Who, the Italian word for who is chi, chi. Chi mangia la pizza? Chi mangia la pizza? Who eats pizza? Who is eating pizza? Chi mangia la pizza? Chi sono loro? Who are they? See this one is a bit confusing. Same structure, question word chi, sono, the conjugated verb, and loro the subject if needed. Chi sono loro? Now, of course, you need to say loro because you say, who are they? And you're pointing, right? So you need to have something to accompany the fact that you're pointing at them, right? Chi sono loro? Like, who are they? So you would add the loro. Why? The, the, the question for why is perché? Same structure. Perché parli bene l'italiano? Perché parli? Why you speak? And then, well, Italian. So all the rest. Why do you speak well Italian? Perché parli bene l'italiano? Perché no? Why not? Perché no? Why not? Perché non mangiamo una pizza stasera? This one is an interesting one because it's a way of suggesting that we do something together. We can do the same in English. Why don't we eat a pizza tonight? We're actually looking at negative statements in the next lesson, but that perché non mangiamo is literally why we don't eat. So why we don't eat a pizza tonight? So why don't we eat? So it's basically, it's a suggestion. Why don't we go out? The word for which is, there's a few. It's che, because we saw it earlier that when what is followed by a noun, which basically is the same as which, we're going to use che, but then we have the, the two words quale and quali. Quale is which when it's followed by a noun that it's in the singular, and quali is which when it's followed by a noun that it's plural. Let's look at some examples. Quale libro compri? Quale libro compri? Which means which book are you, will you buy, or what book will you buy? Quale libro compri? Quale libro compra tua madre? You see the structure is always the same. So quale libro is the question word because I'm asking which book, so I cannot separate which and then put the book 20 minutes later, right? So quale libro is your question word, quale libro? Conjugated verb compra, and then the subject, because in this case we would need to say who I'm asking about, because if I just said quale libro compra, it's like which, what book is she buying or is he buying but who? Like, if we don't know that I'm talking about your mom, I'm going to have to add that bit of information. I can also use che. Che libro compri? What book are you buying? If I want to ask the question about a plural item, then I can say che again. Che libri compra tua madre? What books is your mom, buy, is your mom buying? Or, or I can be 
probably a bit more accurate and say quali libri compra tua madre. So options for which, che, followed by a singular or plural, that's the easier one, uh, or the more pretty, quale for singular nouns and quali for plural nouns, no matter what gender. So these examples had masculine words, but it would have worked the same with feminine nouns. So remember how to ask questions in Italian. Usually you just construct your sentence as if it was a statement and you pronounce it as if it is a question. That's the most common way of asking a question. When we're using question words to ask the question, then the verb goes right after the question word. So, dove lavori? Cosa mangi? Quando partiamo? The, the verb goes after the question word, unless we're using the word che followed by a noun or quale followed by a noun, in which case we just saw che libri compri. So the verb comes after that question word considered as a block. Also, very important thing, the subject of the verb for questions that use a question word like dove, come, perché, quando, uh, chi, cosa, quale, that subject goes after the verb if needed. It's always added after the conjugated verb. And we are done. It's a little bit of a complex topic, I think, so take your time to practice. If you want to practice, become a member of Italy Made Easy, you have access to all of our courses, including From Zero to Italian, which is our flagship program that has eight courses going from beginner, which is where you're starting, all the way to advanced and fluent, you know, complete fluency. But we also have a ton of other things. We have a social network. You can practice Italian with Italian speakers. There's so much. I highly recommend that you go and check it out and consider becoming a member. But I will see you tomorrow for another lesson where we are looking at negative statements or negative sentences in Italian.